leader in basketball instruction and camps. Endorsed by Michael Jordan, Dick Vitale, and Hubie Brown, and where the teaching never stops. Five Star Basketball Minnesota will be hosting a one-day instructional camp on May 18th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and will be hosted by Five Star, The McCarthy Project, and Grassroots Hoops. For more information on the camp, visit themccarthyproject.com forward slash five dash star. XL Athlete is the leading provider of online strength and conditioning and speed development camps. For more information on their training programs and speed development camps, visit xlathlete.com. We are excited to offer the following products on the McCarthyStore.com. Innovate Running Shoes, the leader in barefoot and natural running technology. We carry the full line of sizes and colors. Berkey Water Filters, the leader in anti-gravity water filtration. For more information, visit the McCarthyProject.com or go directly to the McCarthy Project Store website. That's www.themccarthyprojectstore.com. All right, we are back. This is Stephen McCarthy from the McCarthy Project. Um, we have been talking about unity within a team and totally looking forward to this next conversation. Um, Kamal is actually uh, a pro football player, uh, but I think once you get a, a feel for him, you'll find out that there's so much more to him than uh, just that a football uh, that he's a football player. And I, I think my hope is today that we talk about life more so than we just talk about some drama, as Kamal and I have talked about over the last couple of days. That seems like more times than not. Uh, um, the mainstream media is more interested in drama than the truth, and hopefully we can kind of convey some of those things today. Um, just to give a little background on Kamal, he actually went to college at Newbury, and um, for the last three years, he's uh, had short stints with uh, the New Orleans Saints, Atlanta Falcons, and then also the Carolina Panthers. So uh, he is a person that would understand uh, a lot of things about life that I don't think people will realize. So how you doing today, Kamal? Hey, Steve. Doing pretty good, man. Uh, just cool. Chilling, relaxing, relaxing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I'm going to give you a compliment. Um, you emailed over to me last night your uh, your your background. Um, uh-huh. And then you also said, hey, check out um, – this is where I'd like to send people if they want to get a hold of me or take a look, and it's on YouTube. And um, it's kind of funny because I kind of expected to go there and see some highlights, you know, all that kind of stuff. But you have your training more so than anything up there. And the med ball and the chains workout that you did, even though they're very short, that's seriously impressive, I have to admit. I, I don't think people realize that – do pro football players actually have to work out in such a way? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, every guy, every guy is different. You know, um, so you know, most NFL guys, you know, don't even start really getting in shape until like a month before the season, just because you know the vets and they play themselves and themselves into shape. You know, for the, a lot of guys do. You know, I didn't realize that until I got into the league. You know, and I started talking to guys. But um, I've always liked to like beast mode style training, you know, like out on the beach, you know, running, dragging tires, you know, flipping tires. You know, it's it's um it's kind of a mentality. It gives you a mentality, but it's also actually preparing your body at the same time. So it's kind of a twofold thing, you know. So that's why I kinda of like the chains and the bands and uh you know, that type of training so much, you know, it kinda of, it it puts you in a different mind state, you know, so Well well I think there's so much you know, and this is to be honest with you. Uh, I had, did not play football as a as a young as a young man. I was actually a golfer, um, and then I played basketball, which is kind of the odd combination of it all. Um, but it's funny because I literally thought like a football player. I was a warrior within. You know what I mean? And I could never figure out how to get it out because I was so busy sitting on the couch doing what every other young kid that really doesn't have much of a dream, you know, is. Because let's talk about it. Because I, I think you, that, um, 
Previous to this conversation, we've been talking about unity. Um, uh, Stephanie Freeman was at the Boston Marathon uh, while um, that event took place, and she had talked about doing some things that bring people together. And one of the things I want to really talk about today is, is how can a bunch of football players that have been told their whole life that they're really, really good come together as a team and say, okay, we're going to work together, and I'm going to put down something that I'm good at, for the betterment of the team. And how does that happen? Because I think so many people just assume that, you know, they were just freak of natures and they all just show up and it all works right. You know what I mean? And and we talked about this in the part, but before we go there, that's the second part. First part I want to talk about is you actually are, are you don't seem to be a player that was born with the golden spoon, you know, or the silver spoon in your mouth. How kind of tell us about your high school career, what you were thinking, and then how you ended up in Newbury, and then how you eventually switched over to the NFL. Um, you know, as as a child, we all, you know, from um, we all, many athletes or professional football players, for the most part, had that dream of, you know, since Pee Wee, you know, I want to make it to the NFL. We're watching the Barry Sanders of the world and the Jerry Rice's, and we're like, you know, I want to. Be that someday, and um, so that's that's just it. Kind of started with a you know a, a thought, you know, and as I kept getting older and training, and uh, I started to turn my change my body, you know, um, and I was like, you know what, if I if I want to do this, I'm gonna have to start training, you know. So I started looking at different things on the internet and um, just just working out, you know, by myself pretty much because you know. It's, it was kind of just me as far as this goal that I had. You know, you have people around you, your friends and everything, but you start to really realize, like, hey, they really don't want to do what I want to do. And you start <laughs> to separate yourself, you know. And 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 it, that's just the way it works, you know. Either you separate yourself knowingly or you just drift apart just because, you know, yep. hey, they're not on the same path as me. And um, so I got to high school and I just been working out by myself and, then um, one game came along, and uh, it was a funny story. This coach, uh, this little tidbit, I don't really tell too many people. But anyway, so I'm in, uh, I'm in like the tenth grade, you know, you know, the typical high school kid got a, got a little attitude problem, you know. But I worked real hard, so they kind of gave me even more of an attitude problem because it was like, hey, <laughs> you know, I'm out here running hills, and with um, a sled strapped to my back in the middle of the night. Like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, I'm always like, what can you tell me? You know what I mean? So, you know, of course, I had a little high school teenager attitude problem, whatever. Yeah. Um, so one day my one of the assistant coaches comes up to me. He's like, uh, he's like, you know what? He takes me outside. He's like, you know what, man? We really don't need you, man. And um, and I'm just like, huh? He takes me outside and he's talking to me. And I'm just like, all right, whatever, man. So since that day, he told me that I was in 10th grade. He probably, he doesn't even know the story, you know what I mean? I, I see him here once in a while, but, you know, I don't really communicate with him. And uh, so our, both our starting running backs go down. I play – a little 1A high school, you're going to play everything, you know. Yep. So I started – both our running backs go down, so I'm up. Little 10th grader playing on the varsity, man. And uh, I have 120 yards rushing. And, like, the day before, the week before, the coach told me he didn't need me, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I got to have all the newspaper, you know, first time in the paper or whatever, 120 yards rushing. And um, the, I say that to say, like, you know, just go ahead and prepare yourself, man. You know, uh, be ready so you don't have to get ready. You know the cliche. Yes. And, um, Unfortunately, there are cliches, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, you know, so I was I was ready. You know, I didn't even know I didn't know what I was preparing myself for. But you know, that moment kind of just set things off for me and um you know, I've been working hard since probably like the 4th grade to be honest. Start doing little push-ups in the room. You know, you buy you want the weight set for Christmas. You stop wanting toys, you know. <laughs> That's got to how it went. You yeah, know, stop you wanting toys. You have the three ones with the sand in it. Yeah, <laughs> the concrete. You know what I'm talking man. about the one old set that I looks like almost <laughs> knocked you off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, a little skinny bar with the concrete in it, yeah. man. <laughs> it's funny because that's probably dangerous. I mean, I mean, really, in the end, I mean, that little. I remember having the 
the the bench that almost couldn't handle the hundred pounds that you had on the bar because it right. collapsed. You know? yeah. <laughs> I was right there with you, man. I was right. Yeah, there with you. yeah. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, that kind of set me up, and uh, you know, um, off the school, you know, I didn't care about anything but football for the most part, as most most jock heads, you want to say. <laughs> but uh, you know, I had a good head on my shoulders, you know, because I, you know, I started meeting the right people, you know, I had God in my life. So I, I was on the right, you know, I had a good head on my shoulders anyway. So didn't have the grades I needed. You know, Newberry came calling. I didn't really want to go. But, you know, it worked out to where, you know, boom, I got in. So, you know, there you had, I had some struggles as far as um, the coaches and everything. But I had already had that, that goal in my mind. That like, you know what, man, I'm out there I'm playing NFL, you know what I mean? And uh, so we had scouts at the – we had a, I'm at a little – Know, like one of the smallest D2 schools in the nation, you know, and I'm seeing 2006, and I'm seeing scouts there, like NFL scouts. I'm like, this must be, you know, this must be for real going on here. You know what I mean? So, because we had this guy named Heath Benedict. He was projected going like the fourth round. He passed away. And he was the guy who bringing all the scouts there, you know, so they come there to see him. I'm like, man, I, you know, this is something I probably can do. But anyway, um, I make it through all. I make it through there. You know, nothing but God <laughs> got me through there. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay. Uh, so you know, he made me through there. Got me through there and come. And of course, you know, I'm gonna come out of the lockout year, 2011. After going through everything in college and and uh, everything in high school, I'm gonna come out during you know, the hardest year. You know, um, so I don't get picked up. But go ahead. I said to come into the league, just saying, yeah, hey, that was the, the worst year to do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, man. Um, so I don't have an agent. I'm training. My wrestling coach is paying for all my training. I don't have an agent. Um, so all through, in the, I signed with the guy after my wrestling coach had paid for all my training and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is, you know, this is rough. So, um the, the draft comes around, man. Uh, oh, before the draft, I, a pro day comes around. I run four three six in the pro day, and um, you know that gets it gets me a little bit more attention. I do another pro yep. day, Coastal Carolina, which is also in South Carolina, and um, I did like twenty one reps on the bench, ran like four four six. To, um, so it was an okay range or whatever. So. Draft comes around. Don't, the Redskins call me in the seventh round, and uh, they're like, "We're gonna draft you." So, man, I'm freaking going crazy. You know what I mean? <laughs> little, I you know, little kid from kid from nowhere about to get drafted. You know what I mean? And um, so the name comes across the screen is some guy from West Virginia, like guy was supposed to go like fourth or fifth round, some DN or something. So I'm like, "Oh man, I'm heartbroken." Back to the yeah. lockout. So I'm back to training two, three times a day. Uh, staying in my agent's condo with a couple other guys, and we were just grinding, man. It was uh, it was rough. But after the lockout, you know, Chargers called me, um, Falcons called me, and one other team called, and uh, Falcons pulled the trigger on me, man. They was like, are we bringing you into camp? So, um, yeah, made it to camp. Was a, man, that was the roughest time of my life, man. And I didn't know, have any football knowledge. It was very minimal, minimal, you know, and uh, – so I'm struggling with the plays and the route concepts and everything. It's just like holding the world to me. Anyway, we go through all the preseason. You know, I make it to the lab. I tell myself I'm in the room with my roommates, and uh, we're in the hotel. Like, man, I'm about to get an interception this last game and run it back for a touchdown, man. And, you know, they cut me or not, I don't care. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, and my, my Girl, roommate, man, you know, he's like, man. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I know. You know, I can see it as a vision. I can see yeah. it. You know, lo and behold, man, we playing the Ravens 2011 preseason game. Um, she drops back. I see the ball release. Boom, interception, man. I'm running back for like 45 yards. And, um, you know, next day I'm cut. <laughs> so, uh, hey, all this glory, all this shine. Next day I'm cut. So, uh, man, uh, that's just a little brief stint of uh, how I got into this thing, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm too far in to stop now. So, um that's just a little background, short-term history. <laughs> a yeah. little well, long-winded. You know, it, no, dude, trust me, I would rather 
you talk for a half an hour and hear the stories, because I think this is the part that kids are missing. They're missing the reality of the bunch. And, and sure, like, I, like I'll give you an example. Um, my son's a basketball player, and there are players that um, – do you follow basketball much? Uh, not really. Not like I used okay. to. Okay, no, that's cool. But there's a there's a guy that's number six rated small forward in the nation in 2015, and I coached him. He was on the same team with my son, um, only wow. one year old. He coached the older team. My son was on the younger team, and at that point in their career, uh, that his name's Rashad Vaughn. He was probably five ten. He could shoot lights out. Great kid, um, but he grew to now he's six six and. Um, as a sophomore, I mean, he grew like, like over one summer, like eight inches or something like that. And my son mm-hmm. is still in the, he's probably now he's up to about six feet, you know, he's kind of inching, you know, so to speak, you know, and yeah, so many kids have this sort of golden path, you know what I mean? And there are other kids like my son and like you, it seems like, is like, okay, just when you think you've got the break, something, the wheels kind of come off a little bit. And now you have a choice. What do you want, sir? Are you going to quit or are you going to continue on? And you get to have choices like that. And I think that's what I hear you saying is that it's, 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 it's life is a process of working it out. You know, it doesn't mean that because you didn't survive that first cut that you're not going to play. You know what I'm saying? And so now let's, let's go to that. I'll get that kind of that from Talk to us about how do NFL teams actually create some sort of unity when you have so many people with big egos in the room? Man, um, man, that's 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 a really tough question. But if I could, <laughs> I, I, because you know what I'm, I, I'm going to try to, I'm going to do my best with it. Um, <laughs> really, man, like, uh, plus, let's say, let's start with the Saints because that's. You know, that's where I had my longest stint at. Yep. Um, so I'll go back a little bit. After I got cut, I was at home for like three months. Um, they called me up for a workout. I ran 4 3 1 for them. And they, they, was like, they told me that was the fastest time they've ever had somebody run in their facility and the best workout they've ever seen. So they signed me to the practice squad on the same day. But yep. as I got in there, you know, the, the mentality was, you know, you leave your effing ego at the door. You know what I mean? Like, uh. that's, you know, that's just the mentality of that place. You know what I mean? Like, the the guys that they had from the staff, from the office, to the coaches, to the players, you know, you, you can be humbled real quick. You know what I mean? Because it, <laughs> it's what you allow in your locker room, in your facility, you know, because that's pretty much a, it's a community once you get into one of these places. And every, just like in the real life, every community is different. And uh, uh-huh. just, yeah, you know, the mentality of their place was like no excuses, you know, ego at the door, play on the edge, you know, live on the edge, never hurt the team. And um, so, man, if you bring that, if that is your standard immediately, you, it's a lot of things that, you know, you can change. Even guys who have egos and they might come in, you're not gonna survive. You're not gonna survive with that ego in this community. You know what I mean? So. But then, how does how does um, how, what like okay? Now that question I have for you is that say you set the standard, but who's the disciplinary in? There, there really isn't. I want to say a disciplinarian. I mean, I'm sure some teams have them, but yep. from what I've seen with uh, my stint at the Saints, the the players are. I don't want to say discipline themselves, but you're going to be held to a different standard by the players. You know what I mean? Like the coaches already have their standard, and you know that. That's going to be in your face, and you know what to do. But the players aren't going to allow you to just, like, you know, run amok and do whatever. You know what I mean? Do whatever you want. Yes. So say whatever you want. You know what I mean? It's not a one-person type of show. Like we see, like, oh, Ray Lewis, he's the standard of this team. And, and I'm not saying he's not, but I'm just saying it's not always – as clear cut as this is, or this could just be the vocal leader. And then there's a different leader behind him or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, of course, you know, you have your Ray Lewis's of the world, 
which are few and far between. You know what I mean? Like, yep. That's not the, that's not the norm. First off, let's get it. Red Lewis is not a normal person, and most people <laughs> in, the NFL, in the NFL aren't normal either. You know, coaches yeah. say it all the time. If you consider yourself average, you're not in the right business. If you consider yourself <laughs> an average person, you're not in the right business. But um, but Ray Lewis is obviously <laughs> a, a, a whole nother entity in himself, and uh, most teams don't have that. You know what I mean? Don't have that to, especially to that extent. So it is a collective group for everyone to be like, okay, this is not gonna, this is not gonna be allowed. Okay, yeah, that's okay. You know what I mean? To set the range yep. of how far, you know, you can go with things. You know what I mean? And I think that that from what I've seen, that is a, a a great you know system to have. You know what I mean? When you don't have just one guy, you know, telling what goes on and what doesn't go on. You know what I mean? Yeah, so like the big policeman walking around, you know, shoving out disciplines when when not that you don't need the vocal leader because I think there's a vocal leader aspect and there's some people that personality wise are natural at that. You know what I mean? Where there are other yeah, people yeah. that are, you know, your silent leaders. You know what I mean? Where they're they're setting the bar. Like I don't ever remember Jerry Rice. You mentioned Jerry Rice. I don't ever remember him even when he interviewed, you're like that's it? You're just a regular nice guy? Yeah, I, oh. You know, because you would think a guy like that that's the leading yardage receiver in ever in the NFL and, and you know, more touchdowns. I mean, I mean the stat, 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 stat. And, but you're not like an edgy, yell at you type of person? I, I, you know, how did, I guess that's what, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and that's um, that's that's just perception from the outside in. That's the, I'm not trying to down you or anything, but yep. that's just when you you know what I mean. When you're not in it, you can't really feel it or, or or see what's going on. So you know, everyone has perception of something, you know, what they think something is, and you know that's natural human for humans to have. Like everybody's gonna have a perception of what they think something is. But, um, you know, like, for the most part, like, yeah, you play football and, you know, this is your job and your career and your what you love to do. But that doesn't mean what you do at practice or do in the field is is who you are. You know what I mean? And uh, hmm. for the most part, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Guys because are, this is the part that I think as so much of our perception and then – is of who you guys are is really only a small, small, small sliver of who you really are. Right, right. You're seeing a 60 minute game. You know what I mean? Like, yep. If you think you're gonna know who I am in 60 minutes, you know you need to go see a doctor. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and that's what we do. We're gonna have to get you checked. <laughs> and, sure, uh, or, y'all. Oh, he's just. He's out of control. Did you see that right. hit? He hit him out of bounds. He should get his discipline fixed, you know, or something like that. But really, did he just make a mistake? You know. Yeah, and then, you know, the funny thing is, man, football is probably scrutinized more than any other sport. I was just thinking, I was like, man, you know, I love I love all sports. But, like, if you think about a soccer fight, a soccer game, those guys get in fights, pull people here, do all types of stuff all the time. <laughs> and it's almost like it's a joke. You know what I mean? They're like, ah, you see what he did? You know, if a football player does the similar same thing, it's just like, oh, my God, what is he thinking? He's a a horrible person. Who's his and mom? I'm not saying, like, you know, boo-hoo, <laughs> wham, wham for football players because, you yeah. know, we get held to a higher standard. I'm just saying look at the percent, look at how we are perceived. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, that's just, that, I think it's going to be like that, you know. That's just the way it is. You know, you sign on for that when you get in, you know. Interesting. When you say this and is then, what you want to do, you're going to sign in, sign on for that. And see, and that's where you get down to it, you know, and, and we were talking about previous to you coming on the show, is that so much of life today is so far off. I, I, I can only describe it, and I'll hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll see kind of the analogy, is that we're looking at a tree, and we're looking at one leave, and the leave is you punched a guy when he punched you under the pile or something like this, and you got up and you and you just 
turned around and you punched them and they, and they threw a flag on you and you were undisciplined because you didn't go at you, you went after the guy. Okay. But on the other hand, you don't see the trunk of the tree when this is the way I was raised and this is who I am. And the guy did, he said something, he challenged me in a way that I had to stand up for myself, you know, but did we want to stand up like that? I mean, so many judgments are made on the leaves rather than what the trunk of the tree is. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's uh, that's actually pretty pretty dead on, man. Um, okay. You you pretty much put it in a nutshell right there. Because, um, I mean, you think about it. I mean, so much of, like, if we judge you as a player, okay, you run a 4-3-1, 4-3-6. Man, you're fast. Okay, that's just they say. Everybody on the ESPN goes off about this guy runs a 4-3-4. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't have anything to do with your character, you know, or or – your decision making and all that kind of stuff, but it's so far off. Sure, do you need to be fast? Yeah, you got to be fast in order to play, you know. But it still misses the whole piece of the puzzle, and I think that is the part that I'm trying to convey with our show is to say, okay, there's so much more. I mean, let's come back to a different direction because we go there all day long. But I want yeah. to talk about it that you prepared yourself for opportunities as you moved along, and you know you didn't you didn't take what would be defined as the easy route. You know what I mean? And how did you, like when you got into college and you say, okay, the, these pro guys started to come around, you've seen the scouts, but what did you think of during the years when you were having to basically formulate how you thought so that you could actually, when the time comes at the NFL level, that you're able to take advantage of it? To be honest, it, it kind of, I, I don't want to say like, I, it came during college because I kind of almost had it before I got to college, and uh, it was just this this mentality of work until you get it. You know what I mean? My track coach used to tell me, um, I "Always train like you're in third place, trying to be first. And um, you know, he told me that, and I was just like, "Man, <laughs> that was you know, I would I would hear something like that's already in me. You know what I mean? Like." They would tell me, like, man, you know, that's already in me. I already have that in me. And um, it's just like, man, I would run with it. You know, when they would tell me something, when I would come across someone. And um, so really, man, that's just, that's what I do, you know. No matter how far I get, how high I get, you know, I will, I will always have that mentality of train like I'm in third place, trying to be first. And um, that's kind of just it in a nutshell right there, you know. Yes. I didn't really because have to that's... the mentality and learn Go ahead. Yes, because you think about it. I mean, how when you, I mean, there are people that, okay, say they were recruited by Ohio State and they were supposed to be a number one pick and when they were a freshman. And, you know, like a, um, I'm thinking of like Ted Ginn, you know, somebody like that where in college they were unstoppable. You know what I mean? And, you know, by the time he was a freshman running back punts for Ohio State, you know, he was already going to be drafted number one and all that kind of stuff. And he sort of semi-struggled in the NFL, you know, and, and you see a lot of kids like, and, I, and what I actually I'm going to specifically ask a question because you're the opposite of this is so many kids like that, not Ted Ginn, we're going to take his name out of it, but so many kids that uh, I think I'm, I'm thinking of basketball more so where they're told in high school that they're going to be a one and done and they don't need to go to school and they don't need to figure anything out that basically just going to show up for the first year and then they're going to be drafted and all the world's going to come together for them. And then yeah. they don't get drafted. And then you don't hear about them anymore. Well, but, you know, I was the goods. You told me I was the goods. How do you deal with that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, go ahead. No, I'm saying, how do you do that? These are questions I've always wanted to ask somebody that actually was in this situation. Man, Really, man, um, I was always told to taste compliments, don't swallow them. And, um, <laughs> That's a great and, and man, it, it'd be something so small and simple, you know, somebody will say to you. And if you're listening, like, it could really lead you through life, and you wouldn't think about it like that, but it really does, man. So for the most part, when these guys, you know, get to that point, they haven't been, they haven't been preparing themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. And for failure, really, that's what you're doing as, a, as an athlete. I don't care who you are. If you're an athlete, you're preparing yourself for failure, for struggle, for loss. 
because the, there's nothing when you win. There's what is there? You know what I mean? You prepare yourself yeah. for the pain. You know what I mean? So that's why that's why you're training. That's why you're doing everything you're doing for the struggle, for the pain, for the loss. Because the wins and the good times are that's there's there's nothing you can learn from that. You know what I mean? You're learning very minimal that you can't learn. You know what I mean? So you just uh, that's why you're doing all this work. You know what I mean? So those guys in that situation who've been just you know, kinda pushed through, coasted, and haven't been yep. much to uh go through anything, they haven't learned that lesson. They haven't had to come across that bridge, you know what I mean? They haven't had to climb that mountain. So, you know, they're going to have a choice, like you said earlier. You know, you're going to be given a choice. This hill is going to come, and you're going to have, have a choice of what you're going to do. You know what I mean? You can either go up it or you can quit. You know what I mean? Yep. So, um. And then you get to decide. Yeah. I don't want to make it sound so simple because, obviously, you know, everybody's situation is different. But, you see, but, you're, in, you're, you know, you're the perfect example of somebody that has literally the taken the – if there's the – Ohio State recruit that was supposed to be the number one pick as a freshman, you know what I mean, and and was, but then didn't, you know, then basically is two years and out, you know, or something like that. It's kind of funny. I'll put it. Um, Kurt Hester is a, a trainer out of uh, Louisiana and Tennessee, and he had come on. Uh, he comes on our show uh, twice a month on Wednesdays. It doesn't make a difference, but he always talked about it. He said, um, and how, this is his little mental check for people. He said. If everybody that comes to me as a pro football player wants to work out with me and they're unwilling to pay, I know they'll only be in the league for a short while because they're still in this free lunch mentality. And he even put it at a point where if you're not willing to work for something or to put your own skin in the game, you're not just going to be given everything, especially in the league. And he felt that they'll be done in two years and they'll be gone. That's just the way life is. And it's funny because it's essentially the same story you're telling us. Right, right. <laughs> Man, it's, it's everything, you're going to have to pay for it. I don't care what it is. <laughs> you're going to have to pay for it in some form or fashion. You know what I mean? So if you don't want to pay for it, man, it's going to be some guy that that, that is, you know what I mean, that's willing to pay for it. Yep. Whether it's a first round they're going to get the undrafted guy, you know, and the undrafted guys, you know, crazy hungry and, you know, won't be stopped. Or if it's a, a first-round guy going against an undrafted guy and the first-rounder is just super hungry, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, is, is somebody, somebody who, whoever's willing to pay, you know what I mean, whether it's sweat, blood, you know, whatever, <laughs> money, you know, that's the guy who's usually going to gonna come out on top. Dude, this is destroying every ESPN thirty thirty thing I've ever listened to. <laughs> I wouldn't say all that now. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm supposed to not say names. Um, I forget. Sometimes when you're new in the radio business, you actually say things that are probably inappropriate. Um, maybe that's one of them. But I don't think they care about us yet. Um, but I say I, I do feel that the the world of sport needs a realistic picture. You know what I mean? So many kids, you know, in, are just seeing the YouTube video, you know, and it's interesting now that you bring that up. What's on your YouTube? I don't see any of these. Um, I saw one, by the way. But you have 36 videos up there, and they're all of you working out. Is that on purpose? I mean, kind of, kind of is, because, like, I can put up highlights from college and – um I mean, but, you know, the, the scouts have already seen that, you know what I mean? Like, they want to see some up-to-date, what you look like, you know, how are you moving, how are you changing direction, uh, how are you catching the ball. And that's kind of what I wanted to put up. I wanted to show them, like, hey, you know, I'm out here working, I'm in shape, you know, I'm healthy, um, <laughs> I'm available, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, especially, um, and it's funny. Please call one exactly <laughs> One eight hundred call oh. McElwain for more for more <laughs> exclusive information. So. Well, and the funny because now I'm not, I'm going to ask another question because this is going to be off the beaten path and since I've already pretty much ruined every opportunity with ESPN I might ever have you know but um, <laughs> it's funny it's just a joke but um, uh, I don't think they're looking for me right now so I'm in the same position as you and now the question comes how much of the NFL 
is sales. Does that make oh, sense? Oh, man. You hit me with a business question. Okay. <laughs> man, from what I've seen, man, from from what I've seen, I mean, at the end of the day, it's for the most part sales from the outside. From the outside or from, let's say, the upper levels, you know, it's it's going to be sales. Once you get down to the coaches, the players, the trainers who are in there running around, you know, because the trainers are killing themselves as well, you know what I mean, the, yep. from the little intern guy, you know, they get to, yep. to feel the NFL, you know what I mean. I still talk to one of the trainers for my rookie season, actually, at um, when I was with the Falcons. I still talk to him because, like, he, he felt the same thing I felt. He was out there in that heat. And, you know, he was running around cramping just like everybody else, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, of course, when you look at the political side, which I try to stay away from as much as possible, so I don't know how well I can answer your question. But, um, you know, you see things, you're like, okay, that was definitely a political move. This guy is way better than this guy. You know what I mean? Like, yep. Well, you know what I mean? Like you, you see you it, you know. It. I mean, if it, like – and the reason I, I'm coming up with the question, honestly, is because I see at the elite levels that the the difference is so much. It's 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 so small. I mean, when you're talking, I mean, in the league, I mean, I don't know exactly how many you know, players there are, but you know, we can kind of do the math. But I don't do the math on the radio. I was just told don't do the math on the radio, so I won't. But because um, <laughs> it always will be wrong. But the part of it is, is that we're talking, okay, let's just say I'm going to attempt it. Let's just say there's 60 times 30. That's 1,800, right? And yeah. um, 1,800. 1,800 players are actually in the NFL at any one point in time. How many of those are actually, you know, the number of players? I mean, you think there's probably, you know, forty or 50,000 just in Minnesota. You know, it yeah. just really is the elite of the elite. And what is the difference? Man, you know, when it, you get down to it's so it's so small, man, but that's the difference between the college level and the pro level is for the longest time I didn't even want to watch a professional because it wasn't as fun and as exciting. But once I look at it now it's just like okay, now I see why, because the mistake the guys the guys make during the course of the game are cut in half or more than half, you know. And ah. um, the mistakes the guys make and the level that the guys are on physically and their knowledge is, you know, three or four times what a college guy's knowledge is. You know what I mean? I, all the time, many guys be like, man, why did they just tell us this in college? You know what I mean? Like, we be sitting there having just a regular <laughs> conversation. You know, but, man, why didn't they just tell us it before I got here? So I already know all this stuff. You know what I mean? And, um, it's really going to come down to the few mistakes. Few mistakes are made. The guy's knowledge of the game is tenfold, and you know the, the physical, the physicality of that person, of that player, is going to be more. You know, there's going to be less, less games of okay, this guy isn't as fast, isn't as strong. You know, every, yeah. you know, everybody is pretty much right there, inches to inches. And uh, yep. coaches always say, you know, it's six games to make up a play, make up a game. Peyton would always say. Um, six game, six plays make up an NFL game. And, you know, hey, it's, it's true. You know, in the college game, you could say, you know, twelve. You know, just throwing a number out there because the mistakes yep. are going to be a lot more. And um, and then you're at it, and then the players aren't able to take advantage of the mistake, so therefore it goes yeah, yeah. without being noticed, if you will. Yeah, and so interesting. So that's uh. <laughs> That's pretty much it right there, man. Fascinating. All right. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll kind of wrap up everything here in the last 10 minutes or so. Um, we're here with uh, Kamal McElwain, and we're blowing the covers off of the NFL. That's what I think we're doing right now. So, anyways, thanks. We'll be back in one minute. Five Star Basketball, the leader in basketball instruction and camps. Endorsed by Michael Jordan, Dick Vitale, and Hubie Brown. And where the teaching never stops. 
Five Star Basketball Minnesota will be hosting a one-day instructional camp on May 18th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and will be hosted by Five Star, The McCarthy Project, and Grassroots Hoops. For more information on the camp, visit themccarthyproject.com forward slash five dash star. XL Athlete is the leading provider of online strength and conditioning and speed development camps. For more information on their training programs and speed development camps, visit xlathlete.com. We are excited to offer the following products on the McCarthyStore.com. Innovate Running Shoes, the leader in barefoot and natural running technology. We carry the full line of sizes and colors. Berkey Water Filters, the leader in anti-gravity water filtration. For more information, visit the McCarthyProject.com or go directly to the McCarthy Project Store website. That's www.themccarthyprojectstore.com. Alrighty, good afternoon. It is now afternoon on Friday. This is Stephen McCarthy. We are here with uh, Kamal McElwain. Um, did I actually say your last name correct? I've been thinking about that since the beginning. Yeah. Did I pronounce it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Kamal McElwain. Uh, that is correct. Yeah. It's funny because we had last week, uh, gosh, we had a lady that um, from Manhattan, New York. You know, she's some big-time doctor wanted to talk about barefoot training. And her last name um, is S P H N I C K A L or something like this. And she called up, Hey, this is Dr. Emily. And I said, Okay, let's give it a try on the last name. And she goes, It's nickel, like spinickel. And I'm like, Okay, wait, I got it. <laughs> well, you can only imagine. <laughs> I don't even know what came out of my mouth that day. Um, <laughs> He goes, it's okay. I, 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 it's happened before. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh. most most people with crazy names don't get insulted, you know. <laughs> and it's funny because for the most part, it's such a basic thing, you know. You got to get somebody's name, and you're going to be talking to people on air, you know. So they're going to figure out your mistake, and and uh, God darn it, if I just didn't watch that one such in a big way. So I called their doctor Emily from then on out, and uh, there you go. So, there so you we're go. all good. We're all good. But um. All right, so let's just – got three or four more minutes. I mean, anything else you can kind of think of? Because, I mean, I've got a lot of questions going through my head, but I, as always, the time becomes short. But if you were talking to a young athlete that um, that is, is, is very, very good, maybe doesn't have, you know, the uh, – like, like we're talking, they're not six foot four, 330 pounds as an offensive lineman, you know, and but they're but they're a really good player, and they still want to play football. What would you say to them in the next four or five minutes? Oh man, that's a... <laughs> man. I know a big question. You know, I would, I would tell them it's it's you know at the end of the day, life is going to be about your vision, your vision, what you see what you hold inside of your head, <clears throat> as well as you capturing moments. So I'll, I'll try to break down those two segments for you. <clears throat> so if we're talking about visions, we're talking about what you see inside your head, you know, and what you what you can paint, kind of like a painter. And are you willing to hold on to that vision? You know what I mean? Regardless yeah. of what comes in from the outside or – what you let in and what you say, what you're thinking to yourself, you know. So it's going to be how much are you willing to fail, you know, before you're like, okay, I'm going to let my vision go. I'm going to let this dream go that I've had for however, you know. How how much are you willing to fail? And also the second part of that is capture moments. And that's what life is about completely, especially in my, my, my profession. You know, mm-hmm. we got to play. Every play is about four to six seconds, and can you capture that moment? You know, so, like, you know, you're going to get a time to where you might have a workout. You call, someone calls and you have a workout. Have you been preparing yourself to capture moments? I don't care who you are, what profession you're in, your life will come down to that. I promise you. You can bank on that. So if I was talking to this guy, that's what I would tell him. I'd be like, man, you know, 
it doesn't matter what anyone says to you. It's going to be your vision and have you been preparing yourself to capture moments. So that's probably what I would tell him, you know, and he would, you know, hopefully he would be able to understand what I was saying to him and, you know, start applying whatever necessary training, you know, meeting the right people in his life and, you know, and that's pretty much an what I would probably tell this guy, you know. Dang, that's it's not up. assuming God. <laughs> um, that's yeah. it. It's 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 funny because that's it. Is literally, I mean, there's so much in between there, but if you could boil it down, it is literally what is in your head, and when the time comes, can you accomplish the mission? And you don't know when the time is going to come, though. You have to be prepared for when that time comes. Are you going to rise at the time you need to rise to? And on the other hand, you may not, and you have to be okay with that. And there always, I should say always, there may come, there always will be another opportunity um, until you give up. Is that correct? Yep. That's, that's about it, man. <laughs> you got it. Dang. You got it, man. All right. Well, as long as we're both on the same team, that's all that makes a difference in the end. You know, if we weren't on the same team, then we'd have to, you know, do something different. But, you know, we'll have to sell more, I guess. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for coming on the show today. I, I uh, honestly, um, I knew from our conversation earlier in the week that this was going to be cool stuff. And I um, I want to thank you very much for taking the time today. Because I think if kids would understand what you've described in the last Five forty minutes that not only would they succeed, but they also will have so much more um, uh, patience with themselves that that you have to realize that there, it's not all about just because that other guy got noticed, you know what I mean, or whatever other things are going on in life, that you just relax and enjoy the process more so than thinking that you got to be this or be that. I mean, hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. But yeah, where can yeah, people? It does, man. The, 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 okay, good. Because I, um, anyways, so if people want to get a hold of uh, you, I our, our the YouTube uh, website is up on our site. Is there any other places that people can get a hold of you? Um, not really, man. My my agent or my my email. That's, uh, <laughs> that's about that's it. That's about it. That's about it. That's <laughs> more than that. Yeah. That's where I'm like. And you know, we got yeah, I don't really do the social different media social too media much. sites and, and we got uh you know, we got forty different two different we got a talent agent. It's it's kinda of funny because in um in this world, uh I'm really beginning to enjoy sports because really there is an agent and then the player, you know what I mean? But in the yeah. world of trying to book um uh the like movie stars and stuff like that to come on the show. It's like I look at that list and they got nine people you got to call. I'm like, dang, dude, how do you do that? <laughs> so, yes, that's the world they're living in, man. Oh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. All right. Thank you very much for coming on the show today. Um, I want to thank you again for taking the time. Hopefully, you'll want to come back again sometime and share some more wisdom because I think this is the stuff people need to hear for sure. Yeah, man, I really so. appreciate you having me on, man. I really do. Cool. And, uh, Have thank a great you day. as well. All right, you too. Well, thanks, Steve. Bye. Well, that is the show for today, and I, I, I really. Sometimes you just know. I. It's funny because you listen to different radio hosts, and and you, there are certain days that seem to have a special meaning, and I really do feel that today was one of those shows that, um, from the the ashes of a very, of a devastating event in the Boston Marathon to understanding the internal workings of, of surreal events to understanding that life is like that. It's not all about being always on the top. And then to have Kamal come on and talk about the different aspects that you have to learn to fail and, and, and in no way to disregard the people that, Something happened to them at Boston. Uh, I can't even convey to you. Nobody wants to be judged, but they do want to be just part of a team, and they do want to be recognized for their accomplishments. And I think there's so much more to this. But 
thank you all for coming uh, or listening. Um, we look forward to next week. I think we can definitely build on this. And if anybody wants to get a hold of me, my uh, email address is McCarthy at the McCarthy Project.com. Our website is the McCarthy Project.com, all spelled out. Uh, hopefully, uh, Chris survives the snow and a race uh, uh, this weekend and be back next week. But um, so much to be had if you just take and apply what Kamal just talked about. Amazingly great stuff. So have a great weekend. We will be back with you next week. And um, thank you all. Five Star Basketball, the leader in basketball instruction and camps. Endorsed by Michael Jordan, Dick Vitale, and Hubie Brown, and where the teaching never stops. Five Star Basketball Minnesota will be hosting a one-day instructional camp on May 18th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and will be hosted by Five Star, The McCarthy Project, and Grassroots Hoops. For more information on the camp, visit themccarthyproject.com forward slash five dash star. XL Athlete is the leading provider of online strength and conditioning and speed development camps. For more information on their training programs and speed development camps, visit xlathlete.com. We are excited to offer the following products on the McCarthyStore.com. Innovate Running Shoes, the leader in barefoot and natural running technology. We carry the full line of sizes and colors. Berkey Water Filters, the leader in anti-gravity water filtration. For more information, visit the McCarthyProject.com or go directly to the McCarthy Project Store website. That's www.themccarthyprojectstore.com. Come on. This is Steven. Doing well. Uh, do you got one more minute? Um, I'm going to just get right to the chase. Will you come back on our show? Done. You got, I'm telling you, your message is like, kids need to hear this. I'm telling you. And I, I, I just know that kids need to hear this. My son needs to listen to this. So if you're open-minded, and I'll try to stay away from ESPN next time so that that happens. <laughs> it's because I forget. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, if you're open-minded to it, I'm telling you, what you did, I, I wish I had a bigger reach, honestly, because that's what kids need to hear. I'm telling you. So if you're open-minded to it, Maybe once a month, something like that. Yep. Okay. Do you now one other thing? Do you use Skype? Okay. Because that's the next kind of little step for us is that I'm actually just videotaped or I'm skyping myself in this process. It'd be a a nice piece to have you. I was looking at each other and then record it and then because we're posting this all on like like all like YouTube and all that kind of stuff. So I mean when we get but we're not there yet. So I it's um it's just something. But anyways, I will uh, I'll let you go. I just wanted to I'm I'm telling you I, I what you just talked about in 45 minutes amazing stuff to me. So all right. Cool, no worries. Perfect. All right, man. Have a good day.